Michelle, welcome to the Technik Museum Speyer. We are here in Europe, Europe's biggest space exhibition for human spaceflight, Apollo and beyond. And we are sitting here in the mid-deck of the Soviet uh, Union Buran orbiter. And I would like to ask you a few questions about your career and your visit today. Guten Morgen, Gerard. I'm very glad to be here with you in the Buran spacecraft. Guten Morgen, Michelle. It would have been a dream for me to fly the Buran. Uh, I can imagine. But yeah. I only flew the shuttle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only the shuttle, but I would love to fly the, the yes. U.S. shuttle. It's a very nice air, uh, spacecraft. Yeah. So you are trained as a test pilot in the French Air Force and flew into space for the first time in 1992. What made you decide to become an astronaut? Was it the next log logical step? Yes, because I was a fighter pilot on Mirage F1. Then I became a test pilot after doing a school, in the Empire Test Pilot School in Boscombe Down like Thomas Reiter, like Jean Pierre Noé, like many other uh, pilots, test pilots. And then I was a test pilot in France and I became a chief test pilot in France as well. And I applied to be an astronaut, we call that spationaut, to fly on the Hermès program. Hermès was supposed to be launched by Ion 5 and it was one of the components of the European program to go to space with only European. And I was selected to be a, a test pilot of Hermès but at the time I was selected in 85, just after, I remember in beginning of 1986, was the accident of Challenger. So my flight was postponed and I couldn't fly uh, right away with Americans, so I went in training in Russia. I was a backup of Jean-Luc Chrétien for the Aragats mission, and then I flew the Antares mission in 92 on Soyuz. Mm -hmm. So it was, as you said, it was a logical step to fly in space in order to prepare for Hermes, mm -hmm. to fly Hermes. Mm -hmm. How did it feel for you when, when the Soyuz rocket launched? Were you excited? What was going on inside the spacecraft? Well, you have, you have different feelings before the flight. You worry a little bit before the flight. You worry uh, after, I mean, several months before the flight because you know you are the next one to fly. So you start to, to think of, of the risk associated for the mission. But you have a confidence as well with the mission, so uh, I felt pretty confident. You sit on the Soyuz two hours and a half before launch. You make, we make all the check, we check everything before the launch, and everything was in a good shape. And the, the last 20 minutes, it's a kind of a free time where you can observe uh, the, the, the noise and everything, and then arrive the last counting, where they said uh, uh, three, two, one, uh, launch and launch is not launch is a start of the engine so the engine started the middle regime I mean idle regime then middle then full regime and you hear a lot of noise a lot of vibration and then you start to launch and to start to, to take off slowly because mm -hmm. the weight and the, the, the thrust are almost the same so at the beginning the thrust is not so heavy and the acceleration is slow but as 90% of the weight is uh, fuel, fuel. Cu fuel, kerosene and oxygen, it goes, the, the weight disappears very, very fast and then you get acceleration of about 4 Gs pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And you take 4 Gs during the launch, which is 9 minutes. So the launch is, is very exciting, but the beginning is very slow compared to the shuttle. The acceleration at the beginning is very slow. Mm -hmm. You flew to the Russian Mir space station on your first mission. What was life and work? like about the space station? What was, and what, what was the biggest challenge for you and what was the greatest experience for you on board? So um, before, before I launched all my experiments, I had 10 experiments. They flew on the space station me, before me on the Progress spacecraft about uh, two months before I arrived. So when I arrived on the space station, I was a little bit tired. It at, at the time, it took us two days to join the Mir space station. Today, you can join in three six hours. hours yeah. Six or hours, yeah. Six hours or less. And the, the, the big challenge at the beginning, it was that I was a little bit tired, uh, a little bit of motion sickness. I had to find all my hardware to find where it was, all the mm -hmm. checklists, and to prepare my job. And I had 10 experiments, but the main experiment was ultrasound system, echograph, as the cur, to study the variation of your heart in space and uh, all the, the um, neurosensorial experiments. So I had to find the hardware to collect all the hardware and to put the hardware in the position 
where I will use it on the following day. So what I did on the first two, three days, I prepared everything the day before. So at night, instead of watching a movie or, or talking with my friend, I was preparing all mm -hmm. my checklists in for my, the next day. For the next day, and I was prepared always in advance in order to be sure not to lose time. Because in space, because you are in zero-g environment, because you are not used to zero-g, you, you have a tendency to to make longer days or it takes longer to make any time of any, mm -hmm. any type of experiment. We, we have here on display the Soyuz TM-19 capsule. This was a few missions after your mission from Ulf Beerbold. He landed in, in that capsule. How was the landing? And when you see the Soyuz TM-19, does it bring some memories to you when yes. you see the, the burned outer skin from the uh, Soyuz capsule? The, the landing is kind of uh, rough because you take 15 Gs do, when you land. So, so it's a very short time, less than one second, but mm -hmm. when you hit the ground, you feel it very strongly. But the seat is very, is melted on your body, on your back, so it's, it's, it's a good amortization, so you, you don't have any problem after landing. But you feel it very hard. And what I like also is when you land, you Soyuz, you land on Baikonur, I mean in, in Kazakhstan, The, the spacecraft is burned, it comes from space, and right after you have a, the Kazakh coming to you to see you with horses. You know? And when you see the picture, there is a big difference between the first, I mean the horse, which is the first way to, to travel at the beginning, yeah. that were, we were using it 50,000 years ago, and, and today we fly on a, on a spacecraft. And that reminds me the, the phrase of Jules Verne saying that one day we will fly to the moon, to Mars, and to the stars, and beyond, yeah. and beyond as fast as we fly today from uh, Frankfurt to New York. Yeah. On your second space mission, you flew as a mission specialist aboard NASA Space Shuttle Columbia in July 1999. What was the major task of that mission? The major task was to deploy a telescope called Chandra, which is an X-ray telescope. And um, it was a telescope made by NASA for many, many years. So the main mission was to deploy Uh, safely and in a, in a very good situation. So we launched at uh, midnight and we deployed the telescope at 7 a.m. So it was very, very fast. We did all the check and everything went fine. Well, and we deployed at 7 uh, a.m. like, like, mm -hmm. like it was pre scheduled. And then uh, the, on the following days, so it was a short mission of uh, less than five days, we did the secondary experiments that were less important mm -hmm. but also very important for science. This mission was the first time that a woman, Eileen Collins, was in command of a space shuttle mission. How did you feel about working with her and how was your experience? First, I would say that um, before flying in space, we did a training together. And you know, what, when you train at NASA, you train in a simulator, but you train also when you fly on T-38. So I was always flying with her. She was front seat, I was back seat. Mm -hmm. So I knew her as a pilot and I can tell you she was very safe. She never leave anything uh, um, not prepared. All the flights were well prepared and all the safety items were very, very well respected. So mm -hmm. she, was a, she's, she was a safe pilot. I flew mm -hmm. with her in a full res respect of safety with her. So, and in space it was the same. But what I really appreciated is uh, when you fly with her or usually when you fly men and women is If you have a failure of any type, the combination of uh, women thinking and men thinking yeah. make that the solution is yeah. better. Yeah. We had, in, and you know that we had, uh, during the launch of Columbia, we had a big failure. We lost a piece of metal, yeah. which uh, breaks a little bit the, the right engine. Not completely, but uh, we had a, a leak of hydrogen on the right engine, but we arrived safely in, in, uh, in orbit. And also we had the electrical failure right one second after launch. It was mm -hmm. a very difficult failure because all electrical makes a protection of the computer that saved the main engine yeah. before, before cutoff. And we did the checklist very safely because, again, because this combination of when men and women makes that you have a, an overall comprehension of the problem much better than if you are just male or mm -hmm. female astronaut. Yeah. You mentioned that you flew in the T-38 with Eileen. We, we should explain a little bit what the T-38 is. This is yes. the astronaut training jet. Yes, it's a training jet because, uh, uh, as you know, 
all astronauts are in Houston, but you launch from Kennedy Space Center, yeah. so it's a long way, and we go there with C-38. Uh, we have also uh, a, a training uh, s s uh, place in El Paso, so it's again a long way, and the VMS, which is a vertical simulator, is mm -hmm. in uh, Ames, I mean, it's, it's like uh, close to California, so it's again a long way, so all we do in T-38. And T-38 gave you the flying experience. Uh, experience that you need to land the space yeah. shuttle. Before you, need before you do any flight as a pilot on the space shuttle, which is the right seat, you need 500 landings mm -hmm. on the simulator in El Paso. So you, you mm -hmm. need to go to El Paso quite often, and it's, it's a lot of work, so you have to go on T-38 to save time. You were the ESA's chief astronaut after your uh, two flights from 2003 to 2004 and the director of ESA's European Astronaut Center in Cologne from 2005 to 2011. What were your responsibilities? So I was the head of uh, the whole European Astronaut Center, which uh, included three divisions at the time, the astronaut division, the training division, and the medical division. So we were in charge of uh, managing astronaut, training astronaut, and medical uh, care of the astronaut. Training was not only European astronaut, but training of all astronaut and cosmonaut on the European hardware, which is ATV, Columbus. So on the did, ISS. On the ISS, so all that was made. Mm -hmm. And also I included a, a Soyuz a simulator that we built together mm -hmm. with a, with a um, software that I bought from Russia. So we had the kind of a, a Soyuz simulator. So we did the whole training in, uh, in, uh, in Cologne. And I was also in charge of the selection of astronauts of 2008, where we selected the six astronauts that mm -hmm. you know, with Tony Pesquet, Alexander Gerst, the two Italian, uh, Luca and uh, yeah. Samantha, yeah. the Danish astronaut, and the uh, UK Andreas astronaut, Morgan, uh, yeah. and Timothy Pick. And, so, yeah. and they all flew one or two times, and mm -hmm. uh, all the flights were successful. And, and including Matthias Moore, which was uh, between number six and number 10. Yeah. We, but yeah. he, he waited patiently. and. Uh, the Eastern arrive, which shows that uh, when you are motivated and uh, when you are patient, you yeah. can get to your point. Absolutely. We are sitting here in the middle of the Soviet space shuttle Buran, OKGLI, the counterpart to the US space shuttle Enterprise OV-101. You flew with the space shuttle Columbia in 99, 1999. Does that bring back some memories when you are sitting here in this orbiter? Well, I can tell you the, the volume is about the, the same. I mean, the, this is the mid deck of the space shuttle, and there is a flight deck on the top. So you climb uh, this way. This part here on the left would be the the, the toilet, yeah, the, the, the toilet, and you have the stairs to go up. The waste compartment. Yeah. And the uh, airlock, EV airlock, was here, and after you have a. If you have no airlock, you have a tube to go to the back part of the space shuttle for yeah. science, for instance. And all the mid-deck drawers were here, and some were here. And we were sleeping here, just here. Yeah. And the treadmill, we, we were putting the treadmill and exercise was here as yeah. well. And the kitchen was a little bit here, like where you are sitting. So it is the size of the space shuttle. Mm -hmm. It feels like a space shuttle, except you don't have... A, the line, the electrical line, upper all was uh, it's all covered, yeah. covered, yes. All covered, yes. But it, it gives a good feeling, yes. Yeah. This is your second visit to the space exhibition Apollo and beyond at the Technik Museum Speyer. What do you particu particularly like about it, this well, exhibition? I like on this exhibition is that the only place that I know where you have so many information about the human space mission from the beginning up to now uh, and up to the, and future, the future. And yeah. the future, like Artemis. And what I really like also is that you have the same pattern for each mission since the beginning up to today and the future, which makes easy to understand the path of uh, information. You, know, you can mm -hmm. find the same type of information on all, all um, uh, drawers. So and I, I like it very much. You can learn a lot. And uh, every time I come here, I learn something that new that I did not know mm -hmm. because it's so many information. So mm -hmm. uh, to have all in one museum helps you to to get, uh, to get uh, good information. And as when you finish your job as an astronaut to become a speaker, you need to have a lot of information because people are yeah. asking you information about uh, what happened in the past and you need a lot of references. So this becomes a reference for human space mission in the world. 
Yeah, th this is why our goal is not only the exhibition, the hardware, yes. we will bring also the software, the astronauts, because yes. we have so far in, in 14 years, 61 astronauts and cosmonauts here, 10 Apollo astronauts, four moonwalkers. And I think this is very much important when, when they give lectures, talk yes. about the science, the missions, and the, all the exciting and funny things, yeah. And everybody has a different personality and everybody talks different, yeah? Yes. And, and uh, I really appreciate the fact also that this museum uh, is also hosting German astronauts, but not only, you are hosting American astronauts, Russian cosmonauts, and French astronauts. So yeah. you have a mix of uh, European and worldwide missions and, and knowledge, which is important because the future of space is, is a worldwide international, yeah. international organization like ISS. Mm -hmm. This afternoon you gave a talk about your two space missions here at the Technik Museum Speyer. Why do you think it is important to report on astronautical space flight and to give lectures? It is important because um, I know that uh, very often people are asking why we are going to space, why we are doing all that. So what I like to explain is, first I explain my first two missions as a, a first part of, of the speech. Then I explain what we did in the past where we are today, what we're going into the mm -hmm. future. Mm -hmm. And this is important to, s to show that the, dif the, the beginning was difficult. We, we went over these difficulties to go through where we are now. And when we look at the project of International Space Station, we can say that we can be proud because in 30 years, we never had a major failure. All yeah. went fine yeah. with 15 different nationalities. And despite the war that we have in Ukraine now, yeah. Russian, American, and Ukrainian fly in space safely. Yeah. So this is this is an emblem of of peace yeah. and success of yeah. peace in a very high technical, complex environment. It is the only example that I know uh, in in the world. So it's good to explain that uh, if we can do it for ISS, we can do it for the Moon, and to go to Mars as well. And I believe it will be very difficult to go to Mars if we don't join the effort of the all nationalities, yeah. including yeah. the partner of, of ISS of today, plus China, plus India, yeah. which is a dream, but it is a goal, and yeah. we need to achieve that if we need, really need to go to Mars, mm -hmm. want to go to Mars. Michel, thank you very much for You're the welcome. interview. Thank you very and much. For your visit here. Thank you.